Hi guys. Today we're going to be making a customized crochet hook. Okay, so now you can sort of see what I've done here. We take the long snakes and we just chop them up randomly into little pieces. Now I'm going to have to work on the white a little bit to flatten it out so I can wrap it around here in a nice thin layer. And when I do that, I'm also gonna apply a little bit of the liquid Sculpey to this, rub it around a little bit and rub it on the inside of the clay. You could use a pasta machine, that would work too. You don't need a real thick piece, you need it to to be pretty much just a very thin, long rectangle. You want to be able to know that you'll be able to wrap it all the way around this to create a good base. When, this is liquid clay. So when this smushes it all together, as you can see, and you bake it, it will help create a bond so that the, the clay never becomes loose from the from the hook. Now I'm gonna cut a little bit off there before it touches the liquid Sculpey. And well, we'll leave that for after. And we roll it around as tight as we can, tucking under, getting it all around this bottom part, which is smaller. Now these marks I'm leaving right now won't matter one bit once we get to the end project. Okay, I'm gonna roll that on a little and bounce you guys around. And now we're gonna start taking off the excess and start cleaning it up a bit. Spinning and turning. Sorry if I go out of frame every once in a while. The, the camera is up quite a bit above me, so it's hard to sometimes see what's actually where I'm actually at. So we're getting that nice and smooth. Now we'll start twisting this clay around. Again, we don't need a ton of clay up here, at least not this clay. I wanna make this as thin as possible. Now, we're just gonna work on shaping this for a few minutes. Now this handle is going to be very big. I, I would love to see how it would help with my hands and maybe not hurting as much as they do from having a smaller grip to having a bigger grip that I don't have to hold as tight. So we'll see. I'm gonna cross hatch this in honor of Jackie, or Nerdy Crafter if you know her. Uh, not the same kind of sharp pointy thing, but it'll work. So here I'm just gonna do little scratches, hatchings kind of thing. And we're gonna do these all around so that when we bake them, when we bake this, it will leave a couple of these little open marks. Some may close, but a lot will stay open. And the point of that is so that when we go to attach the outer portion, we can virtually do just what we did with the liquid Sculpey and the tin foil. It will, it will give it little crevices to bond to and stick in. This video may be a mess. And as I've talked about, you know, my videos aren't going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Some people are perfect. I'm not one of them. Um, and, you know, people can say nobody's perfect, but there are some people that are pretty perfect. Um, I, I'm just having fun. And I'll show you a few things as we go along the way. And, you know, crochet along in a vlog or different things like that. But... This is by no means a 
watch this because I'm an expert. I've been playing around with poly, uh, polymer clay for two years, maybe, maybe three. Um, but I'm still in no way an expert. I don't have an art degree. Um, I have no degree other than in science um, and in nursing. Uh, but I really enjoy this stuff. And during this pandemic, while life has changed and work has changed, um, this has kept me sane. So I just want to pass on a little bit of my sanity to you guys. Or my insanity. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to pop this in the oven. Um, you follow the, pre the directions on the package. Okay. So these are the two types of clay I'm using in this. They're both by the same company, Sculpey. One is Sculpey 3, one is Primo. We're going to see what the difference is. So this one says bake at 275 for 15 minutes uh, per quarter inch. This one is 275, all right? Yes, so these are both the same temps, which I do that anyway, so. <laughs> but you should follow the directions on your clay. Some clays have different times and temperatures. You'll always be able to see it on the package before you bring it home. So you want to make sure that you try at least to match the clay, match the clays in a project so that you can get a good bake at a good temperature and you'll have a strong piece. Now, the other thing you have to think about is when you bake something like this, if I just lay this down on the new wave like this, it's going to get flat. It's just going to get flat. And then you're going to have a, a mark on here from wherever, whatever it was that held it while you, you know, whatever you touched it to while it was cooking. If you do it on tin foil or something shiny, it will have a shiny piece to it, sort of. So what I like to do is I like to take a big, thick piece of cardstock and then I basically make a little holder. I will come back and show you what this looks like in the new wave so you can sort of get an idea. Okay, so we have all of our colors chopped up here, as you can see. This is the fun part, at least for me. I find this fun. We're going to start by pushing one little spot down there. Then we're going to take a green one push it sort of right onto it and then maybe another green one there since I already had it then we'll take a light green and this is basically what we're gonna do with all of these we're going to take one or two at a time and we're gonna smush them on you don't want to smush them too flat they do towards the bottom just so that it it builds up nicely and you also don't want to have any air bubbles anywhere in the middle anywhere so we're just gonna take these and we're gonna put them in here randomly uh, this was something I had to get the hang of because random is a hard thing for me I always want to have a pattern um, okay you'll have to excuse the little sparkles over here from the light I wanted to get you nice and close so you could see this better. Um, we're going to put just all over. Push it together. And we're going to just roll it. This is where it always looks a little weird to me. Kind of looks like a quilt. So we're going to continue to just roll that, which is going to be weird for the screen. So I'm going to pause. You can see how pretty that is. And we're going to just chop it. There we go. We're just going to very gently push it out a little bit. We'll get our roller. We'll just very gently 
You don't want to push too hard on either side. Make sure we get both sides. And we try to get it as even as possible. And we just work this back and forth for a while until we've got a pretty good size piece. It's gonna stretch out more. It's gonna change the way it looks more, but that's okay. And then once the, once the hook is cooled down, we'll bring it over and we'll get to it. So now we're back, we're baked. We're back in the clay is baked. We're back in the clay is baked. Stretch that out just a little. You wanna be careful doing this because it can rip apart in a second. Now, let's do a little bit of our glue. Don't need tons. This stuff is galoopy. But we don't need a ton of it. Oh, and after my video yesterday, listening back to it, <laughs> please, 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 Aliak, please excuse my, uh, my whistling or my breathing. Uh, I live in the Northeast and it is currently fall and I have a lot of allergies. So my voice sounds hoarse. My lungs sound like I have a whistle. That's just the way it is for this time. So I'm just gonna push that in a little bit there. We're gonna pull this thumb on the hook, pull it up. You can see it's hitting there. Oh. I'm just gonna get a little bit. We're gonna put that right there to glue it on. Maybe a little bit more. It's not gonna hurt it. It's just gonna turn into more clay. And we need as much of that security on here as possible now. I'll take a little tissue. So we're gonna put that down just to get right to that liquid clay. Smoothing this onto the clay that's there. Now you could wear gloves for this part, but I'm gonna wash my hands right after and I find it's harder to work with the gloves in this kind of a thing. So now we're gonna just roll this let me see if I can move this back just a little. We're gonna roll this and we're gonna work out any air by rubbing it. Pull it up off the thing. We're just gonna rub this as we go to make sure we get any of that air that could be up here, down, or up, okay? We'll smooth that more when we come to that. So now we take our knife and we just sort of cut around that top part because that, it ends down here. So we wanna give ourselves some extra stuff to work with. Oh. And wipe that off because you don't want that on there. Now, yeah, it looks like I cut it too short, but we have lots and lots of excess to pull up and tighten around. I don't know if you can see that real well or if my, the lighting is terrible. Well, dummy, turn the light on. Ha ha, let there be light. Now you can sort of see how it gets right at the top circle. We're gonna work it around and close it in and smooth all that out. We'll get to that. 
Now we have to go down to this side and we need to do the same thing. Cut that off there. And we're just smoothing this down. Cut off that extra piece. You don't wanna pull it too much. Sorry for the awkward camera angle. I'm working with an iPhone. I'm gonna take a little Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol on the end. I'm gonna hold it by the handle. And I'm gonna sort of trace along this line. It blends it out really nicely. It's not gonna look like it was all one thing because you've got colors changing. But you'll see right here, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but there's like a nice crevice there. Wait till we get down there and you'll see. And I like to try. It's a little harder with this because um, it's such an awkward size, but You'll see, oh, there's a little too much alcohol in that one. Got a little too juicy. But if you just work slowly, I like to sort of go in little circles like your blending eyeshadow. And most of us know what that's like. And you just have to be a little patient with it. Try to get it the way you like it. If you don't mind that there's a little seam there, then you don't even have to worry about this one too, this step too much. Okay. The worst part of this is holding it like this where your hand gets real tired of holding it and pushing against it. Let's see, I'm gonna smooth that all out. Now, just taking a cotton ball with a little bit of uh, alcohol. Alcohol is your friend when it comes to, to this stuff. Alcohol. We're just gonna smooth stuff out a little bit with the alcohol. Takes off fingerprints, helps with stuff like that. Oh, that sucks. My silicone tool here, to just smooth it, make it look a little less jaggedy. Um, Irie, just a minute, please. Just tap the end a little, and you can definitely see that that's a J. I want it to look nice, but it's not like it's something I'm gonna try to sell um, and need it to be absolutely perfect. There we go. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven. Oh, I love that little line down there. I'm gonna pop this in the oven, and we're gonna bake it, and we'll see uh, how it goes. While I was cleaning up, I found a little uh, bear I had made not long ago. I think he's just the most adorable little guy. I've got his nose already. I'm gonna make a uh, 3D gold heart to put in his hands. And I've gotta get his eyes and a little pink in his ears and stuff like that. But just had a little fun making this little guy. Okay. We've got a finished handle. It's out. It's been cooled. It's very sturdy. It's really nice. I like these colors. Nice spot for the finger. I've got to wipe it down a little bit more. Um, but I don't want to do that until I put my gloves on because I had to redo my nails for because of the alcohol, which I've never had alcohol do that to my nails before, but... It happened this time, so. But yeah, I'm real happy with how this turned out. It's, of course, not perfect. Um, 
and that's a theme I think for me in this channel is that I'm not looking for stuff to be perfect I'm looking to enjoy it to have fun to show you guys how to do it anyone can follow the steps I showed do however you want to do you could do this and you could do it all in one color you could make it nice and thin something closer to this you can do it even thinner than that or thicker than that depending you can even do one that's very similar to my hideous one this isn't hideous because it's thin it's hideous because it's just hideous um, and maybe you think the rest of them are hideous too but that's the beauty of it I love them I made them and I enjoy them I also enjoy when I'm out and I'm working on a project and someone sees this and says where did you get that and then I get to tell them I made it and you can make one it's so simple you need an oven polymer clay and a hook that's it I've got a few more that I will be doing um, over the next few months as gifts well thanks for joining me thanks for coming along today while we made this I'm going to make this video a bit shorter, so hopefully you enjoy it, and uh, give it a like if you do, please, and feel free to comment if you'd like to see anything else.